Live from beautiful Ohio, it's the OK Boomer podcast, featuring siblings, the real Jean and Laura. Hello, hello, I'm Jean. And I am Laura. And we're here to encourage all you boomers, millennials, and everyone in between to be happily OK together. And I'm feeling happy, and I actually have a big introduction to present. Do tell. But first, I want to warn you. Me. And everyone else, my plumber is due to come. Oh, what does this mean? Well, he won't come if we wait to delay recording. Yeah. He won't come. Very true. He will only come... If we start. So we've started. All right. So we're waiting for the plumber. Yes. wonder if he'll be cute. And while we're waiting, he kind of is. While we're waiting, Mm -hmm. I realized it's been a while, Laura, since we've like officially introduced ourselves and we love all our listeners and I know we have new listeners and I thought maybe we should kind of go over who we are. Oh, good for everyone. So we are two siblings, or as we like to say, Sybil Berries. We are Sybil Berries. Laura is a young boomer, huh. and me, Jean, I'm I'm a bit more seasoned. I'm a boomer, a bit more seasoned boomer, and we live in beautiful Ohio. And in fact, there really is such a term as beautiful Ohio because it's the name of a song. And when you hear the piano music at the beginning of our podcast, that is Laura playing. It it is. Well, very well, too. So she recorded our opening music, which is Beautiful Ohio, the official song of our state. Ohio, which we love. Yes. And we're blessed that much of our immediate family lives close by to us, and the rest are in the area a couple states away but easy to get to yes so we are indeed all happily okay together well said and so we want the same for everyone whether you're gen z listening to us boomers even the greatest generation let's laugh and lean in and hug each other you got it all right so how was your week and i'm going to give a little intro to your week i want to hear more about your shoes that you wore in Vegas, which I believe you said, am I right? You bought these shoes when you were in high school? I did. I did. I was packing for our big Vegas trip. And and you want that wonderful shoe that goes with everything because I have limited space. I got it myself down to, I think, six pairs, which isn't bad. But the one pair I brought, I realized, and I think they're still really cute, Stylish. I bought either when I was like 16 or 18 in high school, and they still look great. So this is why I keep everything. This is why I'm a pack rat, because I love my shoes. I remember getting them at Baker Shoes years ago. Out at the mall. That at your... the mall, my favorite shoe store. So they still work. They still look good. Love them. Thanks for asking about my shoes. So hold on to those cute high school shoes, everyone. Did it? Did they make you feel a little special? Did you have a little extra zing because I think they I were? Did. Mm-hmm. I've always sort of saved these shoes because they were my first real high heel snazzy shoe. So there's, I bonded with these shoes, and they don't disappoint. Kind of sexy, and mom was okay with. Yeah, I know. They yes. were kind of. They were pretty strappy, and uh, yeah, good for you. A little much for the day, but. I was a good girl, so yeah, still yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So that was correct. I love my shoes. Now, I will say the whole trip was wonderful. We won't talk about Vegas again, but we were in Vegas, weren't we? Yes, we were, baby. Trying yes. to get home from Vegas, you know, the deal flying nowadays. Of course, after waiting forever on the tarmac, our plane was canceled. Flights all canceled. Back you go. All right, well, it, you, life could be worse than having to spend one more night in Vegas, except, of course, you don't have your luggage. Mm. Mm. I had packed a small little thing that I had very little in, mostly my computer, but I had thrown just a few items into to soften my computer so it wouldn't roll around. 
which smart. ended up being good thinking. Which ended up being good thinking. So when we finally got back to a hotel, I was doing pretty well. Luckily, two hacks for you travelers. Great. Number one hack, I had been wearing a reversible skirt. I have a skirt that's reversible. Well, there you go. Flip the skirt. Might have had the same white shirt, but who cares? I had a whole different skirt. Because we had a lot of the same people on the plane. Of course, we're all in the same boat. But, yes. Yeah, Good so for you. I like travel that. Travel with, if you can pick yourself up a reversible skirt. Number two, I don't wash my hair every day. Mm-hmm. It takes a lot of time. And we had a super early flight, like, I don't know, 6 a.m. I, I have nothing to put my hair up with when I take a shower. Now, what do you do? I try to pen. Sometimes I've done the pen trick. Putting your hair up and tie, securing it with a pen. That wasn't working. And I said, what do I have in my suitcase? Well, hack number two. Hack number two? Underwear. You might scoff at this. Oh, no. Your I'm... underwear with elastic, it's amazing. It can double as a twisty. So there you go. Excellent it's... advice. I hope people are writing, writing yes, these please, down. Yes, please We can make pause a, a minute. Yes. Yes, the underwear is a twisty. Works beautifully. So we finally got home to our wonderful, beautiful Ohio. Now, when when we were coming home and we picked up our car, we noticed at the valet place at the airport, I thought, is this a sign of our times? Mm -hmm. There was a sign that said, we will not accept any stick shift vehicles. And I thought, how interesting do Indeed. younger people not know how to drive stick shifts so they wouldn't, yeah. Right. I, I don't know that I've ever seen that before. No, I have read, you probably have too, that stick shifts are fading, but I never know. Yeah. No stick shifts. No stick shifts. So kids, if, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Just throwing that out there. Now, I will say, since we've been home, trying to keep that vacation mode going, Mm -hmm. I have gone back to the movies. Had not been back to a movie theater since COVID. Have you? How fun. No, I have not. How fun. Very fun. The first night I went with some girlfriends and we saw Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris, which is just fun to say. We were indeed, this was a Wednesday evening, mind you, but we were the... Only people in the movie theater. The only people. <laughs> Literally the only people. And <laughs> we didn't realize like the, the, the desk outside the movie theater that we normally buy tickets from, gone. You have to use a kiosk or you have to go to like where you buy the food to buy a ticket. Because we were all terrified to use the kiosk. Yeah, sure, yeah, sure. That was a bit much, so. Yes, yeah, so there you go. But popcorn? what? Popcorn? We did not get popcorn. No, but they have it. We just eaten. They got all the food. Oh, yeah, good. yeah, yeah. Good. We could have D- decent mu- movie. But what I just loved, and I'm so glad that millennials and boomers are now loving this movie together, was Top Gun. That is something that unites oh, us. Oh my gosh! And I just thought they did a wonderful job, and I felt like all ages were represented. Like the boomers look good in this m- movie. The millennials were up and coming. I just thought it was a nice combination of boomers and millennials. So together. you would recommend it? Oh, highly. It's only, I think it left this week, so we, oh. we got in at the tail end. So Top Gun, A+. Plus. Now, I have been struggling with something since our last podcast. Oh, dear. In Vegas. Because this has just bothered me. Gene, I have to get it off my chest. I realized that my affirmations in front of the mirrors in public places, I was not, I was, I had fallen away from my spiritual affirmations. Oh, and I really like those. I know yes. some other listeners really like those too. So tell well, us Well, more. I'm getting back on the straight and narrow. I now, in my mirror at home, I'm kind of going back and forth between two that I found very helpful. And I just want to share this because I feel so much better getting on my spiritual affirmations. Oh, you got me yes, which excited I did about this. I'm excited. Yes. I do these at home. So at home, one of my go-tos is Psalm 121, 1 and 2. And to concise it, it is God is my helper. My help comes from the Lord. So it's kind of like every day if I feel like oh, I need help with this, I need help with this, but I say, Lord, you've got it. 
Because, hello, God is helping you. I mean, who else do I want other than God helping me? Uh, he's a biggie. All right. Number two, I also like this one. Somewhat because I'm trying to get in shape for the wedding. I got to wear a wedding, you know, mother of the bride arm showing. But I like this. <laughs> wait, wait. Mother of the bride arm showing? Oh, yes. Mother of the bride dress. All the dresses I'm looking at are sleeveless. Oh, dear. I've been making the OH take pictures of me in different dresses. And all I can see are the creepy elbows and arms that have no definition. I don't want the bat wing arms hanging out. It's, oh, so yes. I've been so trying, you're taking this to the Lord. I'm, why not? <laughs> Take right. everything to God. I've been trying to. The word strength has been coming to mind because I'm trying to frantically. Oh, do my, I like that. My little eight pound weights every day. So Psalm 138:3, God makes me strong. You encourage me by giving me strength. So these two, He helps me. He makes me strong. Really, kind of made a difference. And does he just help you once in a while when he feels like it? No. No, all the time. time. Anytime you ask, Anytime. or even you don't have to ask. Yes. So I feel better getting on my spiritual affirmations. I just wanted to put that out there. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, thank you. And that was my week. Huh. No calamities. I know. It's kind of it's, you're they're gonna lurking. get a big, They're lurking, just like yeah. the plumber is lurking. Your calamities are lurking. Mm -hmm. All right, stay strong in the Lord. Okay. Well, yeah. as you know, I'm home. Yes, you are from my road trip. You are five thousand six hundred and fifty-three miles. We covered. That sounds like a song. Yeah, five hundred sixty-five thousand. Yes. Does. That's oh, a lot of miles. Right. It was a lot of miles. Woo. And we have talked in past podcasts about our great time in Vegas and other places. So I won't go into the um, the whole three-week road trip right now. Nitty gritties. But that would be fun to hear someday. I may do that. I may do, maybe we'll do it as a bonus episode for people who are really into traveling or want to plan a, a road trip or hear how a road yes. trip went. I think All right. Would. But I do want to say... America is big and it's it's beautiful. And the best part, yes, all the wonderful people we have in this country. Yay. All the wonderful people we have. We um of course talk to many Americans. We also talk to a family who was uh, sort of doing a road trip themselves. They were from England. Whoa. Good for them. Yeah, they said uh, the, the husband introduced himself. We were in the hot tub. That's the great thing about hot tubs. We've said before, you can really get to chatting. Yes, people start chatting away. He said, oh, he introduced himself and said, uh, I work for a company. I don't know if you've heard of uh, the, um, FedEx. I said, <laughs> well, they stop by every day. So <laughs> yes. Literally, yes. Yeah, he laughed. He, that was his little. They are a very nice family. And another um at another place, another hot tub, we met a gentleman who, um, he and his family are from Bosnia and came here and are now citizens. Really wow. interesting to talk to him. Fascinating. Really interesting. Um, and I, I have to say, Laura, I always thought like, like you and I are nice. I mean, we're nice. We try to be. We do try yeah. to be. There are really nice people though. Much nicer than us. Than us? Yeah. Really nice and friendly and open and look at you and just really, yes. Huh. I have to really work on it because I thought I was nice. I feel like you are nice. Yeah, that yeah. really nice people. I got to hand it to people. Everywhere we went, really nice people. Can't say that enough. Like west of the Mississippi or where did the nice people Everybody start? was nice. Huh. Yeah, like pretty much out of Ohio. <laughs> Oh, dear. Yeah. Come on, come on Ohio. Hi. We can be nice. Now, I, I said I was going to do perhaps a special um, on road trips. One thing I will say, if you are going on a road trip and you are a boomer, especially, mm -hmm. and you're in the southwest area, well, rest areas, they're pretty far apart. I kind of alarmingly far apart. More than a half an hour. Yes. Oh, jeez. Right. And some of them are kind of basic. You have to get back to kind of your camping skills. Just saying that. That was one thing that was... More than an hour apart? Yes. Oh. Yeah, and not very nice a few yeah. of them. But other than that... um May have to fly. 
Mm. We rediscovered, here's something you may not have thought about, a place to eat. When was the last time you ate at a Perkins Pancake House? Oh my goodness. Year, years. Because they're not really in our area, but they are much more out west. I think I kind of liked Perkins. What seems to be their thing now is they remind me, their menu reminds me of Bob Evans, but the breakfasts are like way over the top. Like they had one called like a Boston cream pancakes. It had, it had whipped cream in between each oh. pancake, chocolate dripped on top. It was really oh, kind of yeah. like IHOP. Yeah, maybe more like IHOP too. A little more creative with all the, we yes. enjoyed it. Um, saw a, a bump, uh, no, sorry, a billboard that made mm-hmm. me laugh because we have stop and go places. Don't yes. we have places yeah, called we stop, and stop and go? Stop and go. But this was a billboard for, Whoa and go. Like, whoa, what should we say to a horse? Whoa and go. It actually was whoa? Yeah, it was out west. I thought that was great. It's kind of clever. Yeah. And one more thing, and maybe you noticed this too when you were away. Yeah. Pens and notepads are back in hotel rooms. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. I gathered all mine up, I hate to say, but you, you always feel a little bit naughty doing that, but then again, like you, you paid for it. Right. Yes, you and better believe it. Yeah, I was really happy about that. And mm. they come with, what, eight pieces of paper on the notepad, but it's great. It doesn't matter. It's a thrill to put that it in your purse. It is a new pen. So all in all, I loved, I loved road tripping. I loved, I just loved it. And it, in my mind, it's like mm. when you're binge, when you have a favorite show that you love and you're binge watching it. Like you're binge watching your favorite series on Netflix. Same thing with a road trip. Every day is a new episode. Every day you wake up. That's a fun way to look. You're gonna go to a new place. You're gonna see new sights. It is. It is exciting. Maybe I meet love new people. Trips. So we are thinking about another road trip because we realize we should have gone to Yellowstone. Oh. So we're gonna fit something around. A planned mm. trip to Yellowstone. Got to have the bathrooms along the way, though. Yeah, mm. may have to drive more than northern route. Yeah. Um, so here we are, and uh, this, I think, is a good segue to lead into another topic we wanted to um, kind of puzzle and look at, which is we're getting close to September, getting close to Labor Day. I guess by the time this comes out, it I, will be September. I think it will be actually It'll September. be September. And Ooh. when we think about September, we think of back to school. Of course. Right. And we think of um, probably more so in recent years, kind of almost another New Year's. It's kind of, uh, for many people, September's another Back to regular life, back to the grind, back to setting new goals for your year. You yes. kind of played all summer. Do you have that feeling? Well, I definitely do. And and the band, we live fairly close to the high school. So we have heard the band practicing. Oh, and that brings back so many, so many good memories. We were both in the band. And, and it's just that feeling of school is back. And I was reading which I don't always read, but sometimes I do, that things can trigger you with those back-to-school feelings. For example, going into Walmart, which I must say the dress I have on today is a Walmart it's special. Adorable. Yeah, I like Walmart. Okay. But going into Walmart, you might see the big yellow back-to-school sale. Well, that can trigger, and it's called the anniversary effect or anniversary reaction. Hmm. And it evokes feelings. It can trigger you all the way back to your school days because depending on if you go to college or get your master's, et cetera, probably for many of us, 18 plus years, every fall, every September, you are in your brain thinking, I got to get back to school. Now, these can be good thoughts. Yeah. They can be scary negative thoughts. Mm-hmm. Or a little both. A little of sure. both because in the summer you had your big road trip. We did Vegas, in case you guys didn't know. Oh, yes, right. We were both there. We were both we? there, yeah. Right. And, and summer you think it's going to be endless. Right. That but just, it's not. It's not. And then September comes and you're, you kind of have those feelings of, oh, I got to get back to a routine. I got to get back to normal life. The carefree summer days are somewhat gone. But Mm. mental health experts say, actually, 
we are mentally happier in September because we actually like routine. It does give us new beginnings, a new start, new things to think about. And then I hadn't thought of this, Jean. Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah is the start of the Jewish New Year, which starts September 6th. Like I forgot, they call it the day God created the universe. So it really is a new Oh, that's fabulous. Yes. Yes. So it really is a new year in many ways. Right. So there you go. Now, do you feel good about this or how, what are your feelings on a new year? Well, when you mentioned school, I thought, oh, I have to tell you something about school. Yes. But we're going to get back to the bigger topic. This is a big topic and I do want to unpack it with you, Laura, but I have to tell you this little school tidbit. A tidbit. Yes. So University University of Akron, Mm -hmm. where I went to college. Great school. What? It's a great school. Great school. I thought you said it was a great school. (laughs) It's an elementary school now. We switched over. We're kidding. It's a great. It It was a very good. It's a good university. And my son actually went there too. And actually our mom went there. So okay. Anywho. Yeah. I guess as part of that new year back to school, they have installed something new and special on campus. Oh. Mm-hmm. Like For, a new coffee shop or what? You would think that. Yes. Four, they're called nap pods. What? They're 20 minute refresher. So you can have a 20 minute refresher nap to boost moods, creativity, and focus. That's a pod. Now, I'll show you the picture. I'm going to, it'll be on one of our posts. It looks like, if you can imagine this, what this pod looks like, and there's going to be four. It's a large football helmet. That's what it looks like to me. It's a large football helmet. By large, I mean like probably three feet. You lay back in it with your head in it, and then your legs are stretched out on just like a lounge recliner type. I'm struggling with this. So it's like a big nutshell? I suppose. Does it cover you? Is it like, yes. a, like mean, a tanning booth? Almost like that. It's round, and then there's room for your legs to stick out. It has adjustable light settings and music. This is so bizarre to me. So you're laying in this thing, but it's only maybe three feet high. It's not like a room. No, no, it's not like a room. You're just... Right. Whereas I used to maybe take little naps in the library. Well, that's, I thought why we had libraries. That's why we had libraries. libraries if you were yes. tired, they had sofas in libraries. What happened to that? No, so you can do these pods and get refreshed. And they're just laying around the campus? Mm-hmm. Apparently. They're so not I, inside. Oh, I, I assume they're, they, they said they were around the campus. So I assume they mean They're not just these things that not more. Well, I would hope not in the snow that you have to. But that's only... so that's what they are doing to, I guess, make college in more, you know, adding little positive things. Um, oh, I'm thrown by this. Yeah. So I, I know you have a book that did you're going to share. No, no you have book a book about um, something about <laughs> the '60s. Oh, I do have that. I I was going to read more of it because I only maybe read the first twelve pages. Well, they were but... kind of in the same boat because I just. I was going to read an article, too, that I thought would be perfect for today, but I didn't read it either. <laughs> but the we, title of my thing, then yes. you can say the title. Yeah, but we have our titles. We, we know got that. the titles, yes. What we get from a good enough life. But I think we could actually discuss it. That the title in itself, we, we could discuss a little bit. Say the title again. What we get from a good enough life. That's the title of this book. So it's September. We're starting the new year. Is is that what we're aiming for? A good enough life? No, no. That were we raised me. to be a good good enough? No, we were raised to be the best. Right. Get those grades. Be the first in the spelling bee. Raisin. I'll never get over it, Jane. You. Oh. Raisin. Tell I me. was so concerned with the R A I in the beginning. I missed the ending. Oh. I I don't. I can't talk about it anymore. It's. Talk right. about triggering feelings. Raisin. I was so close to being the best fifth grade speller. And that's what that's oh. what took me down. Took me down. All right. So you were just good enough in that. I was just good enough, but darn it, it wasn't good enough. 
Yeah. I, I, huh. I know. I think we need to try for more. Try for more. Well, my book title. Yes. Yeah, I read the first 10 pages. The 60-something crisis. Of the 60 something, meaning us? Meaning us. We're in our 60s. Okay. Yeah. And we are, are preparing for a crisis or we are in? Well, I don't know. I'm what on do you page think? 10 or 12. Yeah. And so far, I think it, it appears that we are not planning our next 30, what could be 30 years of our life well enough that you plan that your first is in school, so to speak, your first 22 years. Right. Then you have your whole new career, maybe 40 years, but you could have another pretty large chunk of life left and that people don't plan well enough for it. I don't know. I'm, I'm on page 12. Mm-hmm. I'll let you know. But what, what would we plan? Well, I don't want to plan to die this whole time. So I guess planning to new, live. new adventures, new careers, yeah. new, I don't know. I'm hoping it's encouraging. One of the first statements in the book is today, not like is the, you know, the rest of your life kind of thing. What's that? I don't know what that yeah. phrase is. But it was today, you are the youngest you'll ever be. Uh, why, would, why? why would I want to think right. that? Right. So that's why I'm only on page 10 or 12. So far, mm. it's not motivating me. I mean, do you, how do you feel when you wake up? Do you feel optimistic? Yes, I do. Like very optimistic. I feel just fine. When you think about it, even if it's a busy week. Yeah, I feel good. Even if you're having trouble finding your mother the bride dress you've tried on. Right. And hundreds of dresses. Hundreds. Driving everyone in my family nuts. I mean, they're just over it. Like four months ago, they were over it. But I still... and I Wake ho- up every day feeling positive. I hope I never lose this, Jean. I still look at myself and think, I've got time to get myself in shape before the wedding. I don't. I really don't. But I, I do. But I always have that hope that somehow right. that last little arm lift is going to do it. Well, let me tell you, I have a small list of things that they suggest people should do in September to kind of reset and motivate you. Well, maybe I need to hear that. All right, yes, good. Because yes. I don't, I don't want to just have a good enough life. I want to continue to have a fabulous yes. life. Yes, and so they what said, can I do? since we're all kind of triggered by September back to school, sure. Even though we're now in our sixties, mm-hmm. we should kind of recreate that. So here they, here's what they say: Go out and get yourself a back to school outfit. Now, obviously, we're not going to school. But I thought this was kind of fun. Okay, yeah. Just in September, get a new outfit for the fall. Oh, new, I like that. New shoes. You always got new shoes at the beginning of the year. Penny just loafers with it. Penny loafers. Uh, maybe. Oh. Yeah. Exactly. So just kind of a fun new outfit. Do something for yourself. All right. Get ready to learn. Get that mindset of, I want to learn something. I right. kind of like that, too. My little two-and-a-half-year-old loves to learn. So I'm kind of trying to channel that feeling of, what else can I learn? Do I want a new hobby? Do I want to figure out something on the computer I can't do? Social media, I'm just horrible at. So maybe I could get better at Instagram. Who knows the posts that could be coming? Right. All right. You go get her, you. Yes. Yes. Number three, very simple, but darn it, this doesn't kind of give me a pick-me-up. Oh, good. Go buy a new notebook journal pens, yes. folder. Just go out and buy a little quote-unquote school supply for your day-to-day life. Mm. And they said that'll kind of just give you that fun feeling. But you know what'll really happen? It'll look so beautiful, you won't use it. But thank goodness we have hotel notepads. Yes, we but do. But you would never write something in your beautiful... But we would on a hotel notepad. Yes, but that's okay. The idea is great. Yes, I, I don't like that idea because they this is not expensive stuff. Just go do it. Right. Number four, don't know that I would do this, but it's kind of a fun idea. Buy yourself a brand new fun lunchbox. Oh. And every once in a while, depending on if you're working, you could take it to work. If you don't work out of the home, pack yourself a very fun lunch and go somewhere with your lunchbox. Well, what would you pack for your lunch? I think my favorite lunch was... Egg salad sandwich. I was going to say that. Yeah, egg oh. salad sandwich, 
Hostess Twinkies. Yes. That was a real treat. Mm. Hostess Cherry Pie. Oh, you like that better? Yes. Hostess Cherry Pie. And I kind of like tuna fish. Oh, a little stinky in the class, but yeah. Huh. Yeah, yeah. Right, well, we could we could do. Maybe we should just go stand at a bus stop too. <laughs> <laughs> we could. We could get our steps in by walking to our closest yeah, bus stop. Let's see if they'll let us on. And then they just said, "Make it your new you, like 2.0, 10.0, whatever." Sixty point oh. Yes. Like that, Jean. Here we go. And we have to say goodbye, though. But I wanted to quickly say I'm enjoying Fresca. New drink, Fresca. You heard something about Um, pickle. Yes, pickle Gatorade. We had talked about pickles before. Pickle ball is big right now. And pickle Gatorade. So give it a whirl. It's a new you. Right. Pat, what, what do you think sounds good? And thank you for being our... Podcast producer extraordinaire. She is wonderful. We just love her. And you can find us at okboomerpod.com. Don't have my reading glasses on. Yes. Okboomerpod.com. And Twitter, you can find us at ok underscore boomerpod. I don't know why I want to say booner pop. <laughs> I cannot talk. And Instagram, ok underscore boomerpod. Done. There you go. All right. Love you all. Bye-bye. Toodaloo. Be sure to come back to Beautiful Ohio and the OK Boomer podcast. To listen to previous episodes or to drop us a line, visit okboomerpod.com.